All right, we are live. Welcome to Open Air Theology. My name is Jeff. I'm the pastor of Covenant Reformed Baptist Church here in Tallahoma, Tennessee. And I'm also uh, I also have a YouTube channel where this will be airing on. It's called My Two Cents with Jeff Rice. I'm also a co-owner of Post Tender Brust Lux Bible Rebinding and co-owner of Post Tender Brust Lux Beard Care. So if you need your Bible rebound or if you need some some medicine for your beard, please contact your boy. And I'm going to pass it over to my good friend Greg to introduce himself. Yeah. So uh, my name is uh, Greg Mooring uh, Jr., as you can see there on the screen. Um, I am actually the um, former pastor of uh, Hagerman Valley Baptist Church, where uh, Braden is uh, currently the pastor. I was right there before him. Uh, he is a dear brother of mine, and I counted an honor. Uh, and a joy uh, to um, to fill in for him, you know. May maybe I'll get, get to come in where I'm not having to fill in for him. Uh, but uh, yeah, I live uh, currently. My wife and uh, five kids and I we live in uh, Central Florida. Uh, in uh, technically, it's a it's a unincorporated community called Donna Vista. Uh, it's kind of, for those that are in Southern Idaho or it's kind of like um, a step up from Hollister. Uh, so for Ray and Teresa, while well, you're, I know you're supposed to be watching. So, um, but you know, I work from home uh, for for the company that I've been working with close to four years now. That I was working at when I was uh, pastoring uh, Valley Baptist, and uh, I'm actually a native of Florida. I'm not uh, one of those who just show up here because their states were locked down for two years. Uh, now, now, are you one of those guys that we would read about on, on Facebook or in the newspaper the Florida about man? the Florida man, right? Like, um, you know, those guys? No. And actually, there's something funny about Florida man. If, the only reason that that happens is because Florida's got such an open um, like record book for that stuff. Right that they've got to fill the time somehow so people are like florida man look it up so <laughs> that, that's the why you hear about florida man is yeah. because we do it to ourselves uh, but yeah um i haven't i haven't i haven't hit that level yet okay well i like the yet part so i had posted on facebook that i was looking for someone to, you know that was willing to come on here and have a conversation with me and uh greg hit me up uh, privately and uh and wanted to come on and we had a uh, you know communicated on facebook messenger uh, here and there and stuff like that and talked about doing some stuff uh, with eschatology uh, uh him and i would differ a little bit when it comes to eschatology and uh so we was going to have kind of like a round table with me him and Braden, and just have a you know cordial conversation and so he contacted me and i was like yeah man this sounds great i'd love to have you on and um and i brought up the topic about church attendance and he was game and I was game. So I really think it's a, it's a good topic being that I've been, <clears throat> excuse me, preaching through Hebrews and I just got done preaching the text about uh, in Hebrews. Let me turn to it real quick. I'll just touch on it before we get, get started. Uh, Hebrews chapter 10, verse 24, where it mm. says uh, not neglecting to meet together as some are, as some, but encouraging one another all the more as you see the day draw near. Now, we don't have to touch on that text at the moment, but uh, I brought this to his attention because this is something that's, you know, it's been on my heart recently. I'm, I'm going through Hebrews. I'm seeing uh, the writer of Hebrews, um, you know, c call out to these people to, to continue to trust Christ. Do not forsake him. Do not go back to the temple. Mm -hmm. Uh, he, he is sufficient. He, he uh, his sacrifice uh, is, is the only sacrifice that we need. And mm -hmm. and yet people did not trust in the sufficiency of Christ, and they found themselves running back to the temple. And it just it just really made me start thinking about you know church today in in, in our context, right? And so I wanted to have this conversation. And he was yeah. game, so here we are. Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, it's it's especially in our I would say in our uh, current time, uh, right. we're still still certainly feeling the effects. Why I don't know, 
um, especially when it comes to church attendance yeah. um, with uh, COVIDia. Yeah. So <clears throat> first question, and I'll just ask and I'll and we can rift off each other on it. But but how important is it that we gather together? Christians, you know, how important yeah. is it for those that profess faith in Jesus Christ? How important is it for us to gather together? Um, I would say it's important enough. It's so important that you defy your governor during lock when when they command you to lock your church down, that you defy them and maybe even openly um, because the king of kings himself has said, as you just read, you know, Hebrews 10, 25, it's actually, and I've got a little thing just for some texts uh, to, to handle, but we see, you know, Hebrews 10, 25, it says, or in 24 again, uh, it says, let us consider how to stimulate one another to love and good deeds, not forsaking our own assembling together, as is the habit of some, but encouraging one another and all the more as you see the day drawing near. Right. It's what it says. <laughs> so it. If he says it now, there's no way I can make this it. mean something else. No, I mean, <laughs> you could, you know, if, you know, if, you're, if you're looking out, you know, if you're just playing with the text, but if you know, you're just reading it, you know, it's it's the hermeneutical gymnastics that you've got to go through <laughs> to to do this. Um, and hi, Eric. Um, but uh, to, you know, to, to do anything other than what it says to really try to make it to do, be anything else than what it says is it's a twisting of scripture. you Satan is your homeboy. And, um, I, I just, it's, it's too important. It is, you know, in, in the common parlance of 2020, it is essential. It is an essential service uh, for the Christian. So I take it that you didn't shut down during COVID. No. Uh, now that that's not to say that it was easy, right. um, and um, it was tough, you know, and, and internally, um, you know, but it's. You know, because especially at that point, you're having to reassess what Romans 13 even means, uh, because, you know, by and large, we've not had to in this country really consider the what it means to obey God and defy a tyrant, because it's not we just haven't had that issue, but. I've already, so I already, like, I watch way too much, I'm into way, way too many politics already. I'm, like, way up in it, have have been since middle school. And um, I've kind of have a distrust for information that I, I'm given. And something back in 2020 just did not sound right, didn't smell right. And my suspicions in many ways have proven true. I think I probably made plenty of comments, off, off the cuff comments during, uh, during that time while preaching. Um, in fact, I, 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 you know, prior to us not shutting down, I actually had preached out of Habakkuk 2.20, which says, you know, the earth is in his holy temple, let the, all the earth be silent before him. Um, not really knowing... Um, you know, not knowing really what is, what was going to happen. That if maybe my suspicions weren't true, maybe this really was going to be something on the level of the Spanish flu pandemic. Maybe mm -hmm. it was actually going to be something that was going to be like um, tuberculosis is every single year um, that we don't ever talk about because it happens and Africa and not in America, um, but that, you know, nonetheless, when you consider the wickedness of our land, 
and the wickedness of our world, and especially in our land, to the tune of 60 million unborn babies, uh, that you know, 60 million pre-born image bearers who have been violently slaughtered in the womb, and yet we want to sing God bless America. I don't think God's going to really do that. Um, and then, of course, now we're in you know that month uh, that where we you know co-op the the Noah the sign of the Noahic covenant and um, celebrate, you know, a sinful lifestyle that got an entire city incinerated, um, that we, I didn't know what was going to happen. I'm not a prophet nor the son of a prophet. But what I did know, and this was the thing that, this was the struggle uh, that I went through, and I, I wasn't the only. I wasn't the only pastor. We weren't the only church, but we were one of the few that did this in in, in Southern Idaho and and likely throughout the country. That I, I went. I I look back to men like Martin Luther, and then I also look over the course of two thousand years of church history, and say this isn't the first time something like this has happened. And what right. has the church done? It's met for worship. I, I and, and I look actually at, you know, King David's example when he took the census and where he was, you know, willing to, where he was said, when God gave him the option, oh, well, we could either have you, you can have a plague, uh, you can run for your life again, or we can have an invasion. Go with it, David. And his response was, I would rather fall into the hands of the Lord than the hands of men. And so for me, it's like, you know, we're going, we're going to look, we're going to reassess and actually look back to God's law. God's law gives us explanation of, you know, if somebody's ill, you know, the leper was to be the one going unclean, unclean, unclean. Everybody wasn't presumed to be a leper. And so... If you have an issue, well, stay home. It's one the Bible says. Um, let's do that. And so, you know, for me, my own internal struggle was you're dealing with this, but then really come down to two things. The fourth commandment in Hebrews 10, 25. Don't forsake the gathering of yourselves together. At that point, God has spoken. Who who was Brad Little, the go, the governor of Idaho? Who who is he, when his king has said otherwise? And you know, and and we were for I don't know how many weeks it was. You know, for many weeks there in Hagerman, we were the only church open. Um, continued. I was in the midst of uh, preaching through the book of John that actually prayed and finished for me. Uh, you know, he, I, I preached, I think, through half the book, and then Braden pr- finished the other half of the book. Um, so unbeknownst to us, we, you know, we, we tag-teamed the book, um, but continued preaching expositionally through the book of John uh, until, you know, and, and just, you know, that's just kind of how it was. Um, now that doesn't mean that we care that everything stayed as normal because it wasn't a normal time, and I don't think it would be the you know the the appropriate biblical Christian thing to consider, especially after having preached Habakkuk two twenty, uh, that I don't know what God is doing. You know, I have no idea. Um, you know, I didn't I didn't have John Hagee on a moon telling me what was going on, uh, but um, you know, I I didn't know uh, that was a dig by the way um but you know i didn't i didn't know what was going on so you know we did as as a church we did cut back on some things but those things were it's like this is the essential stuff of like if there's only things that are going to be met we're going to meet for the lord's day and we're going to meet for prayer right and especially with southern idaho being mormon uh, you know overwhelmingly mormon and the mormons because apparently their God is so weak that he and so ignorant that he 
couldn't tell their prophet anything? Maybe, maybe you know, the heavenly father of Mormonism was like Baal and was caught on the toilet during COVID. Um, I don't know. Um, but um, my, my thought, too, is we're in the midst of something as historic as this. Whatever it is, whatever God has ordained to come to pass with this instant, you know, with this. Why aren't we as believers meeting together? There could, you know, there could very well be, you know, I I don't know. There very well could be Mormons who are now, they don't have anywhere to go. They, They meet on the Lord's day. They don't meet for the Lord, but they do meet on the Lord's day. That maybe, just maybe, they might wander in. You know, you've got people who at a time are afraid of death. So much so that they drive around with a thing on their face. That why wouldn't we be open? We have the only message especially in that town, you know, where, it, you know, the, the Christian witness isn't really huge. I mean, there were, there were some other, uh, you know, there was two other churches that I would, I would, I would certainly call them Christian. I would say that we would definitely differ on some stuff, but would consider them brothers, but overwhelmingly it's Mormon, you know, either, you know, the number one Mormon or the other sect of Mormonism, the, the number two thing. So, so what about right now? Yeah. So what about right now? Um, you know, we're, I wouldn't, you know, for, for the most part, you know, America is, is open, you know, churches right. are open, but the attendance is, is down. Um, I, what do you think, what do you think God's message for us is like, I just feel like he's kind of, you know, Shifting the sand, if you will. Mm-hmm. You yeah, know, I, he's he's separating sheep from goats, and yeah. I mean not the final separation, but you know, it, 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 like it 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 seems very obvious. You know, it, yeah. it, if you if you profess to be a Christian and it's safe, and you're still and you know it's safe. I mean, you're hanging out at the mall, you're you're going to the movies, mm-hmm. you're going to a concert. Yep, and, and you and you refuse to gather together on the lord's day it's safe i think it's safe to say that you're not serious about your relationship with christ because you're not serious with your relationship with the body the bride of christ right i mean this is go 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 ahead ahead. sorry i say this gets back to what augustine and calvin both said and i I agree with this when i I went to school at the uh, moody bible institute and i I did their online program and um, I, you know, I forget what class, which class it was, but there was a class where we um, we actually got to read Calvin in class, and I was like, "Fantastic! I already have the book on my shelf," um, and <laughs> I got to actually look at the quote that uh, the, out of the chapter, and I was like, "Okay, let me actually look at the whole thing because I have access to the whole thing," and it was you know quoting a thing from Augustine where it says that if the church is not your mother, God is not your father. Mm-hmm. And there were people like, oh, I'm like, hold on. Let's consider who Calvin is. First off, he's a reformer. He's not talking about Roman Catholicism. Augustine wasn't talking about Roman Catholicism because Roman Catholicism didn't exist uh, when Augustine was around. But they're right. They're absolutely right. That if you profess to say that God is your father, and yet the very bride of Christ it, that you're not getting sustenance from her, that you are not submissive to her. Is he really your father? You know, or, you know, are you a bastard? Yeah. You know, or, you know, so, because it, it would seem to be that. And, you know, you, you can't, it, it's like this. If my kids go out of their way to disrespect their mother, 
my relationship between me and my children does not overcome the relationship I have with my wife. Correct. Their mother is my wife first. And, and likewise, that if, you know, if they, if, so if they're disrespecting my, my wife, their mother, there's things, there's things that, that are going to happen. And likewise, if, if you're saying, well, God is my father, you know, the temple of the Lord, the temple of the Lord, the temple of the Lord. And yet you do not submit to the church. Now, let's be clear about this. We're not talking of, you know, I'm a Baptist. So I'm not talking about a hierarchical, hierarchical structure. What I'm talking about is the local body of Christ. Correct. That is, that is, finds its representation in the, in, in, in the eldership, you know, you know, by, in its presbytery in, on the local side and, you know, the actual elders of the church and, you know, the, the diaconate and the laity. That's the church. And that is how our, our Lord Jesus has structured it as a, you know, I, I, I've been, you know, as, a, as an individual embassy of the kingdom in a locale. If you cannot submit to that, that family, that, that structure, and you can get away with it to where God is not reprimanding you at all, and directing you back into the church. I mean, Hebrews is pretty clear about that. That right. you know, don't just don't <clears throat> don't despise the discipline of the Lord because the Lord chastises whom He loves. Correct. If He doesn't chastise you, you ain't His kid. Right. So as y'all know, that I, I do street ministry. So and uh, so, so so I set up probably a block away from our church. There's a little four way. And there's a, a a nice empty parking lot where I'm able to set up, and I'll and I'll set up probably three, four, or five signs, you know, that represent our church, Covenant Reformed mm -hmm. Baptist Church. Mm -hmm. And the last time I was out there, a gentleman parked across the street, and, I mean, and he starts walking over towards me, and like you can tell, this guy was rough. Like I didn't know if he was going to shake my hand or punch me. Like it, it was just kind of like it was Those a fifty-fifty, like right? Those were the best times. Yeah, yeah, and he's and, and he's and, and he's walking like he's you know, like he's a little upset, and you know, and and listen, dude's short, stocky, he jacked up, and um, the first thing he said to me is, uh, "Why are you Baptists? Why are you letting man depict what you are?" And uh, and I started to answer, and then, and then I kind of, you know, his attitude was, really, you know, like just being around him, like you can just tell he, like, like he was angry. And I said, before I answer that question, let me ask you something. Do you have a problem with me? I said, because you're walking over here like you have a problem with me. He said, oh no, 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 uh, you know, like, like, like you know, he he, he kind of toned it down just a little bit. I said, I, I said, I'll happily tell you why I'm a Baptist, but first you need to calm down. <laughs> right. Calm down, brother. You know, I, I, I can't be explaining things if I'm worried about you punching me in the face. And so I just basically walked through, you know, the Protestant Reformation. I explained to him why I was a Baptist. I explained to him that when you see the word Baptist on a church, that that means that they that 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 local body of congregation believes that in order to be baptized, you need to be a right. believer. I said, right. so that's what Baptist means, you know, but he, he, he calmed down and then, and then he, he told me, he said, yeah, I'm a Christian. I just don't go to church. And I relate it to what, like right at that moment, I hear Paul Washer in my head and that quote from him. Right. I said, sir, you know what you just told me? He said, what? I said, hold on. Before I say that, let me just say it like this. What if I said, are you married? He said, yes. I said, uh, what if I told you, man, I really like you, but your wife, I can't stand that woman. He, and he mm -hmm. looked at me. I was like, that's what you're doing. And the whole time mm -hmm. I hear Paul, I quote my Paul Washer. Yeah, he, exactly. You know, yeah. And, uh, and and he was like, I, I guess you're right. Like his whole, like everything about him changed. Mm -hmm. Like he's never had, I guess, a Christian man to stand up to him in the first place. 
and mm-hmm. put him in his place and then use logic to show him. But right. it was it, it, it was just really funny. And, and so I really called his Christianity into question, which brings me to my uh, next question. And uh, so, like, I, I hate to put it out here like this. I don't want to put you on front street and, and you get hate mail or something. Bro, I, 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 <laughs> okay. First off, I, I've I've been kissed on the ear by a drunk on the on it. So, yeah, everything else after after that is totally normal. It's totally normal. Yeah, you know, doing so, evangelism, and getting kissed by a drunk. Yeah, yeah. It's so yeah, I've been there. <laughs> Sloppy wet beer kiss. Yeah, yeah. like uh, can a person be a Christian without being a part of the body of Christ? Kind of this whole, you know, that old gospel country song, me and Jesus got our own thing going. Me and Jesus got it all worked out. And we don't need anybody to tell us what it's all about. So apart from, I'm, I'm, I, 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 I get it. We're not saved by the church. Right. But can, but can an individual be a Christian and not be a part of the local church? Now, I, I, I would say yes if there's no local church around. Yeah, and that would be. So I know it's a tough question. Th- this is where we got to, you know, parse things. Yeah, you know, to to depends on how we're trying to what we're trying to answer. Okay. Yeah. So, in in the ultimate sense, no, absolutely not, because as, as Braden puts down there. That it is to be a Christian is to be a part of the body of Christ. To you know, and this is you know where you know the Protestant distinction between the visible and invisible church. So ultimately, no, it is absolutely impossible to be a Christian and not be a part of the church. Now, on the local level, when we start getting into the when we start getting into that 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 matter of the local body of the, the visible represent the local visible representation at the redeemed remnant in a locale. You have, especially in this country, I say in this country, we have absolutely no excuse. None whatsoever. Correct. <clears throat> um, you know, you, you may have, the brother or the sister who's in the middle of, you know, only the Lord knows where. And there's not a church within 300 miles. However, I, this, this is where I'll, I'll say this. I've, I've been to Haiti before. And I have known Haitians on foot. Walk one way. You know, the, the old adage of, you know, I walked up, you know, 20 miles one way, you know, uphill in the snow, both ways. Barefooted. You know, barefoot, <laughs> you know, and with, with, with gangrene, you know, it happened every time. You know, that the, I've known of, of Haitian believers to walk, to go where they needed to go to get to church. So, if you have, I'll say this, if you have a prolonged behavior where you are persistently not engaged in the church, and you can do that without, without God getting on your case, I, I, I have, I, I will... Again, this is where I will come down and say, I'm not the Holy Spirit. But if I've got to make an assessment right now at this moment, I would rather say, you're not a Christian and you best check it. You had better get to your Bible and you had better get to prayer and find out whether or not you actually are in the faith. But what if I'm watching on YouTube? I want to throw you at you. (laughs) I, I like I'll be I, I now I, I'm it's now let let let's 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 be clear that we're not talking about the um the person who is homebound 
Okay. Correct. Let let let's be clear about this. We're not yeah, talking correct. about the yeah. The, we're not talking about the homebound believer who we're, we're talking about those who are who are willfully able not getting, but unwilling who don't want to put on pants. Yeah, yeah. That's what it comes down to. They're able to go. They're unwilling. Yes, that they you know. that for them, not wearing britches, is more important than Jesus. All right. You know, I, that it's the person who is, you know, again, the, the homebound person that's always been within the context of the church, and, you know, throughout history. This is, you know, the, the diaconate in, in the past. I want to, I think it was in, um, I, I don't know if it was uh, Justin Martyr who wrote about it or that, you know, they would talk about how deacons would go and they would take the Lord's Supper to the, you know, the invalids, the ones who, could not attend a church. It's it, it's it's like this. You know, when we see, when Paul tells him, you know, he writes is in Second Thessalonians, I think, where it says, "If a man's unwilling to work, he shouldn't eat." Correct. If a man is unwilling to go to church, you know, whatever he shouldn't eat, you know, means in that context. That's how I would apply it. You know, because if you can't get up. Or if there's, it's a difference between can and will. If it's in a, if it's a lack of ability, we do what we can as the church to accommodate those people. Correct. And I, I think that you know, in our, in, you know, in in this day and age, you know, when you have the invalid, you have the person who's homebound. We make every effort to, especially. You know, we can use technology, whether that's through CDs, if you still happen to make tape, you know, cassette tapes, you know, that or uh, through a live stream, something like that, which I would actually I'm of the persuasion that a live stream almost should be password protected. Um, I actually when I was at Moody, I, I did or I had we had to deal with this uh, question. Uh, this is two th I graduated in 2017 um, that the question of online service, is it church? I'm like, no, it's not. And this is way before COVID hits. Um, I'm like, no, it is not. It is not a replacement for being in with the body. If you can be, if you can be, and you are not, If that is how you're going to persist, I actually would say that it's incumbent upon the church to begin, you know, looking in, and by, again, by, by the church, I'm meaning everyone from the laity right. up you know, or you know, to, to confront the person who is unwilling to go to church and to confront them in their sin, going that actually what you're doing here is sinful because the Lord has commanded we are supposed to be here. Yeah, Acts two forty two kind of lays it yeah. lays it down, you know, real real quick of what those who received the Holy Spirit, received the Word, and were baptized mm -hmm. did. They devoted themselves to the teachings of the apostles. Yeah, fellowship, breaking mm -hmm. of bread, and prayers. Yep. Right, you, like you that's. You, Go ahead. Uh, okay, so I hope you laughed, you know, in scorn when yes. you had um, Fauci talking about having Thanksgiving via FaceTime. Oh. Like, what is that? <laughs> that is not Thanksgiving. That's no. stupid. That's stupid. Yeah, but but yet churches are willing. And there have been like, well, let's have a virtual Lord's Supper. And especially if we actually look at, you know, you talk about Acts 2.42, and we look at the pattern of, of the New Testament church, and we look at the early church prior, you know, to somewhere in the 300s, you know, when we were, you know, when we weren't afraid of having our heads cut off any, or being thrown to lions anymore, um, the, the, tip, the Lord's Supper was a potluck. People were getting together. They were, you know, to, to meet for church was meeting in somebody's home 
Well, anyway. you need to come to our church and check it out. We have a real meal after every 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 service. Every service we have the Lord's Supper, and then we have a real meal around the table. And it's not potluck. It's you know it's organized an organized meal every Lord's Day right. where we well, fellowship and, and break bread. Right. And, you know, cause if we if we look to First Corinthians eleven <clears> in his um, prohibition about getting drunk at the Lord's Supper, you can't do that with a thimble of Welch's. So. You know, and you can't and you can't be a glutton when all you got is a is a as a piece of a saltine. Right. But that being said, if that is how the Lord's Supper was to be taking place and that is what was happening on the Lord's Day with the Lord's people and that they were together as a family, like going over to grandma's. YouTube doesn't give you that. And it, it actually completely ignores the purpose of of what the Lord gave us, you know, um, I know Braden had just finished reading um, uh, the mystery of Christ is, you know, his covenant in his kingdom, yeah. um, which oh, such a good book. I mean, yeah, I, I recommended it to him. I, I did too. Yeah, I, did I, you? I, okay. I've been yeah, telling him like, good. dude, I'm going to tell you, you might get Pentecostal in some chapters because <laughs> there was, there was times I was crying. There was times I wanted to get up and run around because yeah. it was like, mm -mm. This was so good. I have but a Pentecostal this, background, so it's very easy for me. <laughs> yeah. So, um, but so my, the chapter, when it got to the new covenant and he was, and he was talking about the, the Lord's supper and he had said in there that, you know, the, that the Lord's supper, the, the frequency with which you take the Lord's supper is the frequency with which you are saying, Jesus, come back. Mm. It's the frequency with which you, because Jesus Himself said, "I, you know, when when administering the the Last Supper, and, and bringing about that ordinance, that He is, He said, I'm not going to drink of this cup, I'm not going to eat of this bread, until I eat again with you in the kingdom." Well, if that's the case, and we're proclaiming the Lord's death until He comes, one, what you're doing there with you know your church that it's really saying, Lord, this buffet we got going on right now, we wish you were here right now. Right because now. Because it would, like, right now, let's do this, Lord. And, and every, with the frequency with which we take part in that is to say, Lord, we want you here with us. We want you. You don't get that with YouTube. You don't. I listen to RefNet all day long. So I'm guessing you have an opinion about that. Oh, I'm opinionated. <laughs> I'm incredibly opinionated, and you know, and especially with if 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 the Lord's word is spoken on a matter, I try. I'm still incredibly opinionated with the things when the Lord hasn't spoke on it. Mm -hmm. But you know that that one, you know, I'm not going to fight so much over. But right. when when the Lord has spoken, that's worth going to you know going to the mat for. Absolutely. Um, uh, because he he's spoken on this, and I, why? You know, it just doesn't make sense to me. It, it, it I, I'm, I'm this month in just a couple days, so like eight days from now, will be the twentieth anniversary of when the Lord saved me. In twenty years, I, I could probably count on maybe one or two hands. The number of times I've missed church, Same and here. you know, and it's not, and it's always, it's always because of there was some providential reason I'm not there, not because I didn't want to put on my pants. Yeah, well, and what I'd if the rather see it on YouTube? You know, like what if the pastor doesn't feel like putting on his pants, and then the congregation gathers? Hmm. I mean, are they going to miss something? Well, if he's not putting on his pants, <laughs> Hope, we, we, let's hope he's not putting on his pants. He's not getting behind the pulpit, right? Right, right. <laughs> right. But, right. but well, I'm just thinking about that. You know, like, you know, like, I mean, if we just go when we feel like it, I mean, you know, like, like pastor, you know, preparing messages. You know, like, like with my routine. So I work a full time job. I uh, sorry. You know, from from eight o'clock till midnight, I usually stay up and 
and, and, and do my personal study and prepare mm -hmm. my message. Right. And I'm doing this on up until, you know, Sunday morning, you know, because we don't have a church yeah. building. We have to we have to rent. And so I'm I, I'm I'm there by myself. I'm setting up. You know, I have to get there early enough to where an hour before service, I have time to go back over my notes. Mm -hmm. Right. Listen, if I don't show up. Like, you know, I mean, listen, there's been many days where I didn't sleep that night uh -huh. or I just, I didn't, I, you know, I, I do not in the pulpit. I can feel like I do not want to be here. I feel like crap. Right. Right. I mean, you know, but, but what if I just decided, okay, I'm not going to put on my pants today. I'm going to stay right. at home. Right. You know, I'll, I'll just do a, it. I'll it affects it. everyone. Yeah. But I'd say to anyone and again, I'm not trying to, you know, to, to, you know, bully the people that, that go to my church, you know, that miss here and there. I'm, I'm just saying, right. Anyone like that, that that's does not what miss, we're talking about. Yeah. Yeah. But, but even that it affects the service. Right. Right. When, when, mm -hmm. when, when, you know, when you look over and you see so-and-so is not here, or, it, it, it affects you. Right. right. Because we're, we're, we're family. And so, I'm not too sure where I was going with it, but I was just wanting to, you know, like, like if you just had like what I just read, you know, from Acts 2, 42, and I know not every church has the Lord's Supper every week. And I pick on them for not because I just, you know, when I, when I, when I, when I look at this and they devoted themselves to the teachings of the apostles, mm -hmm. To the fellowship, the breaking of bread, and the prayer. So, so what if next this coming Lord's Day I say, you know what, we're not going to have any fellowship. We're going to mm -hmm. gather together, but we can't fellowship. Right. Or we're going to gather together and we're going to fellowship. We're going to have teaching and the Lord's Supper, but we're not going to pray. Right. Or we're going to gather together. We're going to have prayer, fellowship, and the Lord's Supper, but there's not going to be any teaching. Right. Well, right. You know, <laughs> like what what part of what the Lord has established for, you know, for, you know, it, it, you know, what I find amazing is that, you know, we we're, we're, we live in a society where we want to have all the smells, bells, lasers and fog machines. And like that is what does it for us, because we're closet either or Eastern Orthodox or Roman Catholics. Or we're really wanting to go back to the old covenant system where we get to we need to slaughter a sheep mm. and have blood on the walls. But the fact is that the Lord, what He gave us for new covenant worship, is so simple. Simple. It's so basic. Yeah. It's actually it's it's as if. The Lord intended it to be easily replicated throughout the world, throughout history, and you, that you didn't have to have a huge building, but you could just get together and, 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 and duly constituted and all that stuff, you know, ha having the proper order and structure, but it's so simple. But it is so simple, and yet we can't get off our keister. To be there, yeah. to make, uh, I know the 1689 uh, talks about this, about making due preparation for the Lord's Day. Uh, we, we currently go to a church that's 45 minutes away um, because it's a, it's a Reformed Baptist church. It's an actual Reformed Baptist church in Central Florida. It's, it's a unicorn. It's, <laughs> it, it, we, you know, we were attending kind of, we were attending a, a Southern Baptist church that just, you know, frankly, I, I'm too reformed, and especially when it comes to the, my position on like youth groups and things like that, it's very votey um, on that. Um, that finding somebody, finding a church that it, by 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 and large held that, it's like, how can I not go? Mm -hmm. You know, especially as you know, in in this limbo that I'm in, where I'm I'm not regularly preaching i'm not pastoring a, a church currently um why wouldn't i go to a place where it's like 
you know, people are like it's 45 minutes away. 45 minutes. You know, I'll say this to I know, you know, there, there's a couple, there's a family back at Eastside Baptist Church that which was the church that called called me out. It was the church that ordained Braden. Um you know, that called me out to do church planning in, in Twin Falls, Idaho. Um, there's a couple that lives like way out in the boondocks. If they can make it to church and it's out in the boondocks, I in Central Florida can drive 45 minutes to a church that faithfully exposits the scriptures, that faithfully observes the Lord's Supper, that, you know, is that you can hear the congregation sing and they're singing and that you know that all of those things it's it's so important why why would we avoid it i don't get it it's it's one thing again if if there's providential reasons that's not what we're talking about. What we're talking about, especially in 2022, is going back to Hebrews 10, is the forsaking of our own assembling together. That's what you're doing. If you are the person who is not getting to church, not because of, you know, that you're unable due to providential reasons. I'm not trying to bind your conscience because you've got, you know, you've got the flu. Homie, yeah. stay home. Please. Do what do what God said. You know, you're the leper at this month. Unclean, unclean. But if there is no providential reason for you not to be at church, you are expressly. I mean, we don't even have to argue from the fourth commandment because, you know, there'd be those who are like the fourth commandment isn't valid in this day. But Hebrews 10.25 is incredibly valid. Yeah. And it yeah, says so don't forsake. Yeah, so I'm teeing this off to you, and, and once so I, I'm going to read that portion of scripture, and I'm going to throw you a ball for you to hit. But I'm okay, going to so do a little bit of explaining. Hopefully, uh, no dumpster fire coming because I, you well, know, feel I'm just lighting them up. Well, you know, it is what it is, right? <laughs> um, you know, like it's important because the Bible talks about the church being the body of Christ, mm -hmm. right? And it talks about right. you know the, the eye is different from the hand, right. the ear. And I was uh, sitting with some uh, some ladies at my church, you know, just uh, so we have two uh, older families that go to our church. And um, and so I, I'm kind of in in between the two families. And so the the, the two ladies are, are right here by me and we're all having this big conversation. Mm -hmm. and, um, and and I mentioned I was talking about this, us being a body and, 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 and how we're gathered around the table and we're fellowshipping, we're talking scripture, we're making fun of each other. Like it's right, <laughs> like it's it's it's, 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 it's the fam. real thing going on. Right. Right. And, and, and I mentioned to him, I said, how does a one arm man wash his arm? Mm. And one of them looked at me, she said, I guess they have to get their spouse to help them. And I said, that's what the body of Christ is. All right. Mm -hmm. I need my arm. I need that spouse, my spouse, my arm. I, 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 the whole body needs to be together mm -hmm. unless, you know, again, something providential. So I want to uh, kind of take this in a, so I'm going to read from Hebrews 10. I'm going to read 19 through 25. And I'm going to do just a little bit of commentary, but I want to set it up for you. So I believe in verse 22, we hear, you know, this teaches faith, 23, hope. And then verse 25 speaks of love. And then, I mean, 24 speaks of love. And verse 25 is going to tell us how to love. So, so what I believe here, it's going to get us into Christian ministry. So basically, the... Uh, the, the lay person that comes to the church has a ministry inside the church. Right. And, it, and that's where we're going to get to. And I believe that 25 is going to be the answer of how that takes place. So, uh, so verse 19, it starts with therefore, and this is speaking about the, since the sacrifice of Christ is true and that, and it's sufficient. 
brothers, since we have confidence to enter the holy places by the blood of Jesus, by the new and living way that he opened for us through the curtain that is through his flesh, speaking about his crucifixion. Mm -hmm. And since we have a great high priest over the house of God, you read chapter three, it talks about whoever's in Christ is the house of God. Right. Let us, so those that are the house of God, draw near. We draw near because of what Christ has done with a true heart full of assurance of faith. With our hearts sprinkled clean, you're born again from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. And I don't know where you stand on this. and We don't have to debate this right now, but I would say that this is you have the, the entrance into the covenant and then you have the sign of the covenant, which I would take as baptism. <clears throat> He said, "Now let so, so let us draw near those of us that are in Christ. We have received the sign. Let us hold fast to our confession of hope. What what confession that we believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the Living God, death, burial, and resurrection. So speaking about, so let us with faith draw near with hope without wavering. Faith, hope, for He who promised is faithful. Right here, verse twenty four. And let us consider. So here is the ministry of every person that goes to church." Let us consider how to stir one another up to love and good works. So, so, so I would say that when we gather, every one of us, lay person, you, you got saved two weeks ago, you're in the body of Christ, you have a ministry. Well, what is that ministry? To love one another and to, to stir up one another to love and good works. And someone should be stirring you up to love and good works. Now, how do we right. do this? not neglecting to meet together as is the habit of some but encouraging one another all the more as you see the day draw near so those yeah. that have their faith in christ he is their hope the, the christian confession is the gospel the death burial, and mm -hmm. resurrection of jesus christ he is the christ he is the one who uh the, the God man who, who who took on flesh, lived the life we couldn't live, died the death that we should die, uh, uh, his death, burial, and resurrection. This is our hope. We we have faith in him. He is our hope. We, those of us who have that faith, that have that hope, are to stir one another up to love mm. and good works. Right. How? By not neglecting to meet together. Right. So this is so so as we gather together as a church. This is ministry being done. Thoughts. How can that be done? <laughs> yeah. Outside, yeah. Of that, outside of that. Well, you know, and this is where I, I would say that one of the things that we need to understand that these, by and large, these are the people that we're going to be, you know, if they're in, you know, people in, you know, people in good standing, you know, that there's no reason to question whether or not they're saved. These are the people you're going to spend eternity with. This is right. your family. You know, and this is, you know, from a local perspective, it is the, it is the local representation of, of your, of your family. You know, I, you know, that these are your brothers and sisters and it does you no good to not, come together and you know and, and this is where you know I, I would say that maybe I, I might sound moderately radical a little bit here that in many ways the way that the church often functions I, I don't think we've quite yet got away from Rome mm. you know one Let's look at the Lord's Supper. Why is it only a thimble of juice and a wafer? I mean, thankfully we don't practice intinction, right. but you know, you know, you, you sip it, don't dip it. But that I, I would even say that we don't even sip it; we're supposed to drink it. You know that we we should be engaged in you know what you're doing. You know, a meal. You know, the elements, you know, aren't to be separated from a meal. You know, that it is a regular thing that the church is supposed to do all the time. And I, you know, and you back to your point about Acts 242, you know, 
what element of, of, of worship that we're used to participating in would we be okay with saying, you know, let's do it once a month, once a quarter, once a year? Would we be okay with singing psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs once a quarter? We're not going to sing at all? Like, yeah. what is the church even meeting if it ain't singing? Yeah, so, you know? yeah, so that was the whole point of, of me saying that, you know, what if I don't show up right, right as, as the pastor? Right. Well, well, if you take what we just said, you know, about removing any of the the uh, the worship, whether it be the teaching, the fellowship, the breaking of bread, or the prayers, like like people would be up in arms, right? Well, what I just read of how to consider that the, that the church is supposed to consider how to stir one another up to love and good works, and I. And, and I spoke about that being ministry, mm -hmm. but what? And, and and earlier I said, what if I didn't come and perform my ministry? Mm -hmm. When people don't want to put on their pants, as you said earlier, what they're doing is they're neglecting to fulfill their ministry. Yeah, and, and I I would actually even I like the the stronger word in my opinion. I think the stronger word. That I think the New American Standard does it. The I've got my Legacy Standard uh, in front of me. Oh that, Lord, bless them! <laughs> yeah, yeah, I love it, man. I'm yeah. gonna tell you, I, love I got it. mine right here. I got yeah. it's got the little New Testament right there. Oh, look at that bad boy. Yeah. Oh, so so pretty. Uh, but if uh, but it says forsaking, hmm. you know, neglecting is I forgot. I you know I forgot got to brush my teeth today. I neglected to do that. Yeah. I intentionally didn't put on deodorant today. I wanted you to smell me. That's forsaking. You know, I I just, you know, I didn't I didn't just take, you know, the toothbrush or the toothpaste and I just forgot. Oh, like I was in a rush and I neglected to do that. It's I took my toothbrush and my toothpaste and I threw it in the trash and walked out the door. After just having an un, you know an onion garlic cookie, you know, and so for there there is there is something to be said when you are as the body coming together, giving one another a hug, sitting there. There is something to be said when you know okay you know I could sit there and go oh I'm ordained I've got my degree from you know in, in biblical studies woo but there's something to be said about a saint who's been walking with jesus for 50 years that they have seen his faithfulness that they have they have faltered and they have they've, they've had failures and they've had joyous successes over the course of decades I have much to learn from them into conversation. I let, uh, let me give an example here uh, of a real example that happened. So when we moved to Idaho uh, from North Carolina, the you know Eastside Baptist is an age integrated church. I was a youth pastor in North Carolina. It became pretty hard to be a youth pastor when you're convinced of age integration. <laughs> so. Uh, but we ended up in Idaho at Eastside Baptist. My son is one year old about this time. He's now six. He's one at this time. He's used to being shuttled off by this at, at this moment, being shuttled off to nursery or something else. What we I would was going to the men's in the men's Sunday school. Or a men's you know Sunday Bible study, however you want to call it, and he was having a hard time adjusting to this. He's by far the the youngest guy in the room. There are men in this, you know, around this table, who have walked with Jesus for decades. You got him. You've got at this table one man who'd been to prison in Haiti for Jesus. There's a lot I can learn from that guy. Okay. These men went out of their way going, no, no, Greg, it's okay. 
He's fine. And to make him comfortable for weeks on end, every Sunday, whenever he was just kind of like, yeah, because he's one. And what are who are all these old guys? They began from men older than, you know, at least 10, 15 years older than I, plus, and then some almost four decades older than I was, or no, actually five decades older than I was, began to break out in Jesus Loves Me. Singing to my son, Jesus Loves Me, This I Know, For the Bible Tells Me. So a, a song that we sing, you know, we still sing every night in family worship in order to make him comfortable. Go, like, boy, you're you're here. You're right. in church. That these are these men love Jesus and they want you to know him. That is so it's such a big deal. And it's so little. Like it's such a little thing. But to have men who had been walking with Jesus for decades upon decades upon decades who have who have seen him work in ways that I won't understand or at least that I haven't understood yet singing to a 1-year-old boy that that is something you do not get by forsaking the gathering of yourselves together mm. You don't get it. You don't get so you don't get it when you know you go through a hard time and you go through a miscarriage or you go through the the the, the case where you know you lose a loved one. Like you know right at the beginning of my time there at, at Valley Baptist I had to basically run away. yeah I had you know within like 2 or 3 months of me being there my uncle died who was himself a Baptist minister and he had asked me to do his funeral. So I had to go, I had to go from Hagerman, Idaho to Atlanta, Georgia to perform a funeral of a man that I was like, I'm, I'm, I'm pastoring now. Fantastic. I've got my uncle who's got 50 something years of ministry experience that I can learn from. And within three months, he's dead. Having a church, and this this is pre-COVID, then having a church to be there, just to be there, to know that, and to pray for you, to care for you. Why in the world would you not put on your pants and go to church? (laughs) I don't get it. I don't don't get it at all. It doesn't make any sense. You know, getting to, you know, the, the scriptural side of things, God has spoken. What are you doing? First off, that's first and foremost, what are you doing? Why are you willfully disobeying your master? You are his slave. Don't forget that. He shed his blood for you and for those people that you don't want, that you are so lazy that you can't even roll out of the bed. That you can't even do what is necessary to get yourself to make due preparation to sell to observe the Lord's day. Jesus died for those people, and you can't do enough that you don't find it important enough for you to get up and go to be with the people he died for. The one okay, so there's that. But then, you know, speaking on the experiential level, why in the world would you? Ever forfeit a blessing like that? Why would you do it? It makes no sense. It really makes no sense to me at all. I have gr- so, and, and, and I'm going I'm to speak here a little openly. So, I, I, you know, I became a Christian at almost, you know, I was like six, 15 going on 16. So, again, it's around this time, 20 years ago. This is, you know, 
June 2002. So it's not that far removed from uh, September 11th. And unbeknownst to me, within a year, there would be absolute turmoil that would happen in my family. Right. And my, and my family dissolved within, mm. it began dissolving within a year of being a, after being a Christian. I needed the church. Uh, not only did I need Jesus, here's the thing. Jesus, in his kindness, and this is why I don't think we, 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 we grab hold of enough. Our Lord Jesus, at this moment, yes, he dwells in us by his Holy Spirit. Praise God for that. But we are not Gnostics. We are not merely spiritual creatures. We are encased in flesh. And in the eternal state, we will still be encased in flesh. You know, we will, we will be fleshly creatures. It, it, that, we will, that we will have a body like Christ's. Our Lord Jesus, in his kindness... In the meantime, as we await his return, you know, you know, however you want to go eschatologically, we agree that he's coming back, that it's going to happen. He, he's going to rip open the skies, and it's going to be lit, fam. It's going to be great, and we're going to get to see him as he is. Okay. But that time isn't yet. That a time, that a point of time has not yet come. In the meantime, what has he given us? It goes back to what Ephesians, I think it's Ephesians, where it talks about how he has given us, you know, apostles and prophets yeah. and teachers, mm. you know, pastors, teachers as a gift. Because he cared so much about his church that he gave gifts to men, that he gave us our, he gave us us. And are, why are we so stupid and so foolish that we're that we were like, oh, me and Jesus, we got a thing going, bro. You don't, because He has given you something and you reject it. You reject the good gift that He's given, and that is the church. That He has given us the church. He cared so much about us that warts and all that we have, that He has brought us together to be a body to be there with one another the, all the one another's that we see in the new testament that to you know what, what romans 14 talks about being able to weep with those who weep rejoice with those who rejoice yeah. there yeah. is something to be said i mean when you know you've got just the you know as a kid you've got the dopest christmas present you want everybody to know and you want everybody to celebrate with you how great of a present you got We've been given the church. He's given us that. And yet here we are like, I'd rather watch football. Or, <coughs> oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. The pot roast is coming to be done. We got to hurry up. That, that The preacher needs to hurry up. Because we, we got pot, well, you know what? We can fix that problem. Have a potluck after church, and the pot roast is in the church fellowship hall. But, uh, you know, we, we can clear that problem up real fast. Right. Why in the world? Why, for our, even just for selfish reasons, why would we forsake the gathering of ourselves together? And it tells, now, like, here's the thing that, that, you know, back to that text. Right at the, the thing at the end, it doesn't just say, <laughs> don't forsake the gathering of yourselves together. It says, encourage one another. All the more as the day, as you see the day drawing near. The more and more you're like, you know, how, again, whatever your eschatology may be. You look and say, you know, the world kind of sucks right now. You know what you should do? Go to church. Draw near. More church. <laughs> have more church <laughs> have a longer church service yeah or imagine imagine this imagine you know we'll, we'll go back to the whole pants thing you know the uh someone from the church of Colossia or you know Corinth didn't put their pants on that day well they wasn't there when they publicly 
to the church read Paul's letter. Mm. All right. Because Paul didn't give a letter that was, you know, that had enough copies to pass out to everyone. Right. Or I can mail to you and you can read right. this letter. Right. If you want to hear the letter, you had to be at church. You had to be gathered together. You had to be a part of the body. Right. right. You know, like I like to explain it like this, like individually, we are temples of God. You know, if you have the Holy Spirit in you, you are a mm -hmm. temple of the Holy uh, of God. But you're not you by yourself are not the church. Right. You don't become the church until those temples are gathered together right. as it, an yeah. assembly. Right. You see what I'm saying? Right. It's yeah. So word. like, yeah, yeah. Are are the churches? You know, you know the seven churches spoken of in Revelation. You know, right. like, you know, the letter was read out loud. The whole book of Revelation. Like talking about a potluck or, or, or the meatloaf or, or whatever, uh, you know. Right. What if it's a slow reader, or what if they're reading uh, Psalm one nineteen? I mean, come on now. Right, right, right. <laughs> you know, uh, if you give any commentary on that, you're there for t two hours. But right. it's just, I, I, I think it's we're living in a world that disvalues the Word of God. Yeah, exactly. You know? You know, if the preacher preaches 20 minutes, he, he's either loved or hated. And if he preaches 50 minutes, he's either loved or hated, right? You know, just depending on, you know, like us, right. us reform folks, uh, you know, people in my church, if I preach 20 minutes, they'd probably kick me out. Like, but you are an preach role. You can't preach that short. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and so it's... It, it, Okay. Am I back? Can you see me? We're back. Okay. Okay. I thought maybe it was me. Yeah. Well, we have a, a, a storm that kind of was pushing through here. So I was a little worried if we was going to be able to do anything at all. That kind of threw me off. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah, so I just think that, you know, we're just living in a time where God's words devalue. People don't mm -hmm. care what it says. Uh, me and Jesus got our own thing going. And just like you, you know, I was trying to gear this conversation to this point, you know, of, you know, uh, I meet a lot of people that, that, that tell me they believe in God, that tell me they're a Christian, but they have no relationship with the body of Christ. Mm -hmm. And, and man, again, these are people who are able and unwilling. Mm -hmm. And, and, and. And as a pastor, I really try to to say things graciously. I, I know I get on here sometimes on this podcast and we kind of ramble off and joke around. But, you know, right. like, like when I'm really dealing with someone, I want to be compassionate. But there's no way that I can confirm what they're saying. Right. You know what I'm saying? I, I have to uh, speak the truth with a love sandwich, you know, and. and you know, and just again, like I always got that Paul washer in the back of my head. Right. So you love God, you love Christ, but you can't stand his bride. Right. Man, right. That, you know, we are the bride of Christ. Not only are we the bride of Christ, but we are the body of Jesus Christ. Right. Right. And and how can a one arm man wash his arm? Right. Right. Yeah. And that, that gets back to, you know, being the body. Our Lord Jesus he, he, yeah, he actually has a physical body. Correct. He's the God man, right? He's truly God, truly man, but he isn't here in person. That's our hope. That's the ultimate hope is seeing him in person, like <laughs> being able, like I, I, I would, I would love, I, I'll be honest. It is going to be enough for me to see his face, just to see his face. And if I can give him a hug, that's enough. Like, it's everything I want. But in the meantime, in the meantime, and yeah, I don't know if you follow in the comments here, that yeah, we, we do live in a TikTok generation. We absolutely do. You know, but, you know, the fact is that his he he has a body, and that's it's the local it is the church it's 
you know, again, we're not talking about a hierarchical structure. Again, I'm a Baptist. Yeah. I'm, you know, I, I don't, I don't look, I don't look uh, to that Antichrist that sit, that sits in Rome. I don't look to the the men, you know, the in in the Eastern Orthodox Church. I don't look to the Archbishop of Canterbury. You know, uh, as the church, I I look at my local congregation and say, this is what this, these are the people that God has grafted me with to be the the visible representation, the visible expression of his, of himself. Why, why would I forsake that when he was so kind to me? That the Spirit of God, that the Father cared so much, that the Son cared so much, that the Spirit cared so much, that they that that are the Triune God would bring little pockets, little embassies of the kingdom all throughout the world and have us together. Why would I say to would I have the gall not just to say, you know, the idea of what you know Paul Washer's quote there of "Hey, dude, I don't like your wife," and my my of course responsibility like "Hey, dude, I carry a nine mil with me all the time." So, uh, <laughs> but the or a thirty eight, one or the other. Um, but it's more than that. It's us actually saying, "God, you had no idea what you were doing." You didn't know what you were doing when you set it up this way. You, oh, sovereign one of the universe, ye who holds the waters in his hands, ye who, you know, who confounds the wisdom of the wise, you messed up here. You didn't know what you were doing. You could have think, done things different. Yeah, and it's like, do you really want to say that? What arrogance! Like it, and I'd say it would come. It come down to this: that when we treat the church and church attendance to the, where it's a, it's not a big deal. It's a, you know, I, I might go. You're arrogant. You're proud. Maybe you should celebrate Pride Month, but for a different reason. That you you have you have outright by your actions, you are saying, God, you have no idea what you're doing. Your plan was wrong. But guys, he was he this was his plan from before the foundation of the earth. Before he said, "Let there be light," this was going to happen. This was the this was the goal, or at least in time. This is the goal. Correct. This is what he was doing. And yet, we can't get up. We can't go to church. We can't attend. Be a part of a local body, where God, in His great grace, that when Jesus was when He ascended to the Father that he gave these gifts, you know, of a, you know, we've now, we have the gifts of the, of apostolic teaching right here in this book that we have, you know, the, the prophetic word given to us right here that we have the, the faith that has been once for all delivered to the saints right here. And that he is in his kindness, continued to propagate and raise up men uh, biblically qualified men who will take the time to delve into this book and say, thus says the Lord, that as long as what I'm doing here is saying, thus says the Lord, because he loved us enough to do that. He loved us enough to establish the diaconate so that there'd be deacons to care for our physical needs while our pastors are digging into the word, you know, mining the depths of the succulent pieces of God's word to feed us and to pray for us. And then, and then, you know, and those to me are like just bonuses. Then you get the laity as a whole. You get the whole of the actual, 
of what is the congregation. You know, the laity isn't the, just the congregation. The, la the congregation is, is the pastorates, is the pastors, the deacons, and the laity. Right. That's the congregation. And, but, uh, you know, on the laity side, that you've got people who have been through stuff. Again, they're, everybody needs a church grandma. Everybody needs a church grandpa. And, you know, everybody needs a church aunt and uncle. I mean, you need them. There's something about it. It's so good. And yet, you know why it's good? It's because it was God's idea. It was all his idea. And then we are arrogant enough to say, meh. Or even, we're even so willing as to say, well, Caesar told me not to go. So I can't. Yeah. But who is Caesar? Whose image do you bear? Not Caesar's. And you are to render unto God that which is God's. Do what he says. He'll take care of the rest. Now that may mean you're in jail. Yeah. But he'll take care of it. And you know what? If you if you were to suffer because of church attendance, I am looking forward to seeing the reward that you receive in the kingdom. Yeah, yeah it goes back to what we was talking about at the very beginning. Um, you know, the, this whole post-COVID. Um, everything, you know, you don't have to wear masks, you know, of course, like at, at our church, we never like, look, we, we plan it during COVID. We never require masks. Our doors were always open. Right. Signs were always out front. Uh, on Saturdays, I'm preaching, inviting people to church, like waving at the cops, inviting them. Like, right. I mean, like, like, you know, you, you know, we're, we're not listening, you know, but, you know, it comes, this idea of, of judgment hitting in the house of the Lord, you know, mm. God yeah. separating, yeah. you know, the wheat and the tares, the, the sheep from the goats, you know, it, it could be that the, the church got too full of goats mm. that God yeah. needed to do something about it. And we're, and we're seeing that now, um, you know, the churches are open. There's no condition for, for the most part, I'm speaking about, you know, in America and stuff like that. I'm not, I don't really know too much about, you know, other places in the world. And, 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 and people are not putting on their pants. They're not willing to go. Well, it's because you're not a Christian. Right. I mean, yeah, let's I mean, just go ahead and, you know, we call it ace and ace, a spade, a spade. We don't call apples oranges. Uh, we just call them how we seize them. Right. If we want to go right. back to that little. A little country saying, right? We calls them right. houses, seasons, but right. you know, I mean, it just goes back to that, and and and, and of course, it, in one sense, COVID was a a horrible thing that we've had to experience. A lot of people died, um, right? You, you know, we I know I've lost a lot of friends because of it. You yeah. know, whether it be my stance or or whatever it is, but but at the same time we can't despise what God is doing because he's sovereign, right. correct? I mean, you, right. you're reformed. You know, the, got, I, the, I God wasn't sitting on this stone and said, oh, what is this, COVID? What, what is this? No, right. no. No, it, was, it came no. by his decree. Yeah, it came by his decree. And uh, and we just have to realize that, you know, you know, we're talking about like suffering through it and or, 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 or you know, the, the pastor that lost a lot, you know, I mean, we lost a lot, but we gained a whole lot too. You know, I mean, the church that planted is not the church that's meeting today. You know, uh, we had, you know, three original families. Like, you know, it, I think we had like 10 families and then it dwindled down to three. And so we're working our way back up now. And uh, I mean, a lot of things took place, right? But, yeah. you know, like we were saying in the beginning, that this is this does not take God by surprise. God is sovereign. God is weeding out the sheep and the goats. And the whole point is this: is is that if you know if you're not if 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 you are like where the text says, uh, and let us consider how to stir one another up to love and good works, not neglecting to meet together. And right here it says, as is the habit of some. 
Yeah. The ones right here where it talks about as is the habit of some, these were those that weren't trusting in the sufficiency and the supremacy of Jesus Christ. So when you look at the text, the book of Hebrews, like if you were to lay it out, it's about the supremacy and mm -hmm. the sufficiency. He, Jesus is greater than everyone that came before him. And Jesus' sacrifice is greater than the previous sacrifice in the Old Covenant. Right. These people that were neglecting to meet together, forsaking to meet together, were saying, no, he's not greater. And no, his sacrifice isn't sufficient. We need right. something else. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the, exactly what you are saying today if you are neglecting to gather together with the body. Yeah. That Jesus is not su su supremacy. He's not greater and his sacrifice is not sufficient because right. what you're doing is, is you're denying the word of God that tells us to not forsake, not neglect, whatever you want to put there, right. the assembling of ourselves together. And, right. and I believe this so much that, that I asked this dear brother who we've been conversating back and forth on text messages here and there to come and uh, be a part of this. And let me ask you before we get off here, Mm -hmm. uh, are you are, are you free next week? I, I do believe Braden will not be back on for two Maybe. weeks. Maybe. Maybe. Okay. I yeah, I just have to. I have to. I have to look at. Uh, I'm just trying to think right off the top of my head. Let me look real fast. This the this the ninth. Well, that providential in that regards. You know, that's the. Next Friday, I'll say this, ne next Friday celebrates, you know, 20 years of being a Christian. Who, who would have thought, well, you know, 20 years ago that I'd be on something like this, um, mm -hmm. that um, I think I might be. Well, um, well, well I'll, I I'll be. go ahead and address a topic that we'll, I'll be talking about. And if, you, if you're able to jump on, uh, jump on. And, and if someone else wants to get on here, too, and we'll have a three-way three conversation, please message me. But I want to do something where we're discussing a topic that was brought up tonight dealing with the hypostatic union jesus being both god and man okay and we want to i want to look at what, what this means and what was accomplished through him being both god and man so yeah. if you're interested next week i'd love to have you back on and again if you're listening tonight and you're you want to join the conversation hey send me a message and we'll have that conversation. But we are at an hour and 27 minutes. So we'll go ahead and get off. If you have any. Uh, so, so so once we go offline, stay on. Yeah. <laughs> can, you, said, I, you can't I, do that without me. Oh, I, yes, I, I, I can, I, brother. <laughs> I, 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 I got to get on here. And, and maybe this is where, you know, I think, you know, again, you know, talking the eschatological stuff. Because I know, you know, he's all mill. You're post, you know. Well, I'm post not post. I'm I'm post millish. Post mill ish. Yeah, well, I, I, I'm a partial. I'm a I'm an optimistic partial preterist. That is a hyphen. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I you know I I I I, I kind of am sitting at a. Um, I, I'm I'm pre millennial. You know I'm yeah. I'm pre millennial. Yeah, we're praying. For, we're po we're <laughs> well, I'm 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 sorry. I read my Bible, uh, but. <laughs> He says, I'm an um, all-mill in denial. <laughs> all-mill in denial. Well, uh, but, you know, I'm, I'm – so I'll tell you, like, just to make this quick, what I'm, I'm, what I'm reading right now, uh, I don't know if you've heard of The Theocratic Kingdom uh, uh, by George N.H. Peters. He was actually a Lutheran who I was a pre-mill guy in the, in the 19th century, which if you know, like, anything church history, you're going, wow, talk about a unicorn. You know, like a that is a, a pre mill Lutheran in the 19th century, and the book is it's actually a three volume work that's like 2400 pages, I think. No, 2100 pages, it's 2100 pages, you got like 4,000 references. It's it's an absurd amount of stuff, and it's taken. I'm like 150 pages in, and I'm like, okay, now we're actually getting to the content of the book. It's like, dude, and this guy obviously had to write it by hand. I'm like, man, but it's it, it's a it's a pre mill work, and it kind of actually of the of the historic, uh, the the Kyalistic, uh sense, you know, the one that Polycarp would have believed in, you know. Mm -hmm. um, so, 
yeah, yeah. It's um, interesting. Why you got though Polycarp out there? It's because he was. Uh, <laughs> uh, I'm just saying, you know, the disciple of the guy who wrote the book of Revelation was a pre male guy. Yeah, he just wouldn't listen, man. He had he, 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 right, he yeah. was dull of hearing. Right, right, right. Yeah, yeah. But uh, you know, and it, so, but it's you know, it was it, you know, I, I'd, I'd like to to get on because some good natured. Uh, <laughs> what do you find? He, his church father, <laughs> his church father can can beat up your church father, bro. Bro, your church father is Augustine, <laughs> Brayden. Augustine's your church father at this moment. Um, at the moment, I don't think I have a church father that that agree. I, I, I kind of feel eschatologically homeless. Like I would say that I'm post meal. My, my, my problem is is that post meal take the kingdom too literal, and all meals take the kingdom too spiritually. Well, that's, well, right, and the out. and then the, and then the pre meals they put the kingdom far out, and, well, and so not necessarily, not necessarily. This where this where we got to have a discussion, and we could yeah we yeah could really, yeah. So let's let, let's plan for that. that. Uh, so when Brandon comes back, we're going to be continuing the Matthew twenty four. If you if you're able to before we get into Matthew twenty four, mm-hmm. we can come on and talk about. Uh, our, our different views of the kingdom, yeah. and if you're able to walk through 24 with us, I mean, I've preached through Matthew 24, and I've, I've preached it as a primo guy who, you know, I went to a church um, in in Glens Ferry, preached, and I was like, I'm about to get crucified because yeah. I, I'm not I'm not preaching the typical like this is all in the future. I'm like, ah, it's you know, it's got some at least some fulfillment. Uh, I, I, of in, in 70 AD, but I think it's. I would also say that it's much more than well, just 70 AD. Well, Johnny Cash is one of my favorite singers of all time, and he has a song about Matthew 24, and it's just well, I listen to it and shake my head. But I love oh Johnny Cash, man. Yeah. Yeah. So let's plan on doing something, but 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 more likely next week, unless I can come, you know, because Braden he he does, you know. He he could talk me into not talking about the hypostatic union, but but if he doesn't talk me into not talking about it next week, I'll be talking about the hypostatic union. Well, I'm, and if you're I, able to get on, I'm 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 free. I'm I'm good to you know literally. I don't know if you noticed my. Where is he? Right there, Godzilla. I can go. I can go anywhere. You know, with okay. this stuff, man. So. Sweet. Um. I again, we're in an hour and a half. I, I I could put I could probably push this out three more hours, but then yeah. we would all we'd hate each other. Yeah, because <laughs> we're really tired. Yeah, but yeah, so let's let let's let's definitely try to do something else if you're willing. Uh, yeah. So do you have uh? So whenever we click off of live, don't go anywhere. Okay. And uh, do you have any last words? Uh, you know, I know. I know that I can. Obviously, you know, you're like, are you? Uh, you know, tell us how you really feel. Right. Um, but I really, this really does. It it's, it concerns me. Um, because it's it's so important. Because what Jesus did. If Jesus died for the church, that's all I need to know. You know, yes, he died for me. I'm a Calvinist. I I absolutely believe he died for me. But it's not so individualistic, his death. He died for me, yes, as an individual. Yes, my name was, you know, written in those nail, you know, pierced hands. But I wasn't the only one there. I wasn't the only one that he was dying for. He was dying for his church, for his people, for all who would repent and believe in him, all who would forsake their sin and turn to him. That's who he died for. He died for his people. And why why would we treat his people? Yeah, now we're, we haven't hit glory yet. We got problems. We got real problems. But these are the people Jesus died for. And these are the people that Jesus has given you 
O sinner, to be with. So don't forsake it. You know, I, I know I get. I know I'm passionate about it. Uh, Brady wants to jump on for a second. Oh snap! <laughs> oh, it's like it's like you know when you're watching wrestling and you know you got you know you said you suddenly hear somebody's theme song coming on, you know, just jumping in like oh no, steel chair. Uh, I guess we said something that he wants to correct our theology real quick. Uh oh. But you know, it's I'm just saying is. If there's anything, like I know, I know that it's may come across, especially as grabbing somebody by the scruff, you know, taking them and like, what are you doing? But you know, occasionally, we we need more Saint Nicholases to knock somebody upside the head and say, what are you doing? And because especially for us guys, sometimes a knock upside the head says, you know. You make sense. Um, but, you know, I'm just saying, man, don't don't forsake the church. It's too precious. It's too much of a blessing. And if you are, repent. Repent and, and, and run to Christ and his church is waiting. Pray didn't drop off again or have an issue. I don't know. He's... He's fickle. Where you at, Brayden? Over here, commenting, trying to hop in, but he ain't there. Yeah, he's over. You know, I want to call me names, call me an all mill, and uh, you know, yeah, bad mouth dirt, me, dirty words. <laughs> you coming, bruh? What set you clean? Okay, he just checked it. Here's for hoping that the like the si siren doesn't go off while he's I know, on. Right. Bear with us, ladies and gentlemen. Braden's wanting to come and start some trouble. Yeah, we're gonna start having this podcast like Joe Rogan and just. <laughs> Here we go. Hey. <laughs> hey. What's up, What's dude? What's up? I heard something about you guys talking about the hypostatic union with Almy, and I got all upset. <laughs> <laughs> now, now, I would let you talk me out of it, but but we, we would have to do it before we talk about Matthew 24, because that's going to be a long time. But that I is gonna have be something to talk about next week. Fair enough. I, well, so, when, so, so if I can't do it, you got to give me something to talk about. You got to say, in, okay, Joe, this is what I want you to talk about. The nice the thing about the hypostatic honestly. union, we, we can get like – we can remind people on that almost every single week. So I will, we'll, we'll have plenty of conversations with that. I was just thinking about, because uh, man, one of the heresies I've addressed with a heretical person that calls himself a pastor who I wouldn't call a Christian brother, um, believes in the kenosis theory heresy and has taken it way outside of, of even being considered closely associated with orthodoxy. Um, and so the hypostatic union is very near and dear to my heart as it should be for every Christian. So that's why I was like, hey, I gotta get on here and talk. <laughs> so anyway, <laughs> I enjoyed your guys' conversation though. It was good. Thanks for letting me jump in on a second. Well, yeah. Do you have any, uh, I know you, you gave a, like a, a list of why it's important to go to, go to church. Is there anything on your heart that you would like to say about what our conversation? You know, I, I missed, so I, I listened to the front half of your guys' conversation, and then I had to make some phone calls regarding church stuff, um, so I, I wasn't able to listen to everything. You know, I, I think the the number one thing that we have to remember, I think, when it comes to church is that it's, it's in adoration of who God is. Whenever we see Absolutely. angels or anybody uh, worshiping God, it's about who He is. And so... Yeah. I am the bride of Christ, but it is Christ that has purchased me. I ought to do this for him, right? And and I ought to do this towards him with this purpose. And then not only that, but when we understand that the bride of Christ is made up of the universal, invisible body of Christ, I ought to go to the local vi visible to encourage that brother and sister that is also the bride and stimulate them to good works unto our God. And so there's, it's right. multiple faceted, right? Like right. there's so many different right. angles to talk about with that kind of stuff. 
Um, but I think the primary focus needs to be focused on glorifying God and then everything else um, encap encapsulates that central right. aspect. Right, right. And that's, you know, and that's the thing is, you know, as we're engaged with a local body and we're partaking of not just, you know, we're really the means of grace, you know, mm -hmm. the, you know, as, as we would call them, that they really, I know when I, you know, before, um, you know, Braden uh, took over, you know, one of the things that I, uh, I know that I would, I would talk about is, you know, or, you know, because I was going through John and it was, you know, astounding to just see and really just kind of step back and go, wait, the Holy Spirit wrote this book and he gave us this information about our Lord for a reason, because he cares about us, because he loves us and he wants us to know this. Mm. And that, you know, we so often are like, God, I want, I need your grace in my life. I need your grace in my life. I need your grace in my life, which we do. We need it every day. Mm -hmm. You know, and I'm, I'm not just merely asking for saving grace. I'm asking for like just grace to, to live yeah. because, you know, I, I'm a wretched sinner. And Hey, I got to go. See you guys. See you, man. I knew it was going to happen. Yeah. But, you know, it would say is that, you know, we ask for God's grace and he's given it. He's given the means. And yet we want to kick it to the curb. I don't get it. I don't, I don't get, get it, it, brother. All right. Well, we're going to sign out. Well, and, and, I, and before you do, I just want to say um, anybody from Valley that, that is on there, I know uh, Ray and Teresa, I know you're were, you were watching. Anybody else that is either watching an hour, watch later, I love y'all. Um, and I'm grateful uh, to God that Braden is your pastor. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm so thankful uh, for that. And I'm thankful for the time that I got to, you know, to shepherd you for that brief period of time through the, that hectic, hectic time uh, that was COVID. So um, love you guys. I miss you guys. And uh, may the Lord continue to bless y'all. Yeah. Well, Greg, it was a pleasure having you on brother. And I hope we can do more in the future. Yeah. But to everyone who's watching, again, we love y'all. If you do not have a local body, a church to gather with, we would encourage you. I know my brother agrees with me to find a Bible believing church that walks through the scriptures that that are um, you know, hold on, <laughs> Brayden's trying to come back. <laughs> well, uh, what's up, man? Oh, I'm back. False it alarm. wasn't us. False alarm. Oh. We're <laughs> Yeah, well, I was over here saying goodbye and everything. You click oh. back in. Yeah, but and I, I, I'm over I here, buy. you know, waxing eloquent <laughs> and emotional, talking about how much I love, That's right. you know, Valley Baptist, and then here yeah. I'm feeling thunder, bro. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. Bro. I'm just, I'm jumping in. I'm yeah. jumping. In. I had one more thing to add, everyone. Just wait yeah. one second. <laughs> you, you just miss being on this podcast. No, that's a fact. I mean, yeah, yeah. part of I being in the church is fellowshipping with brothers and sisters in Christ, right? And right. we have a yeah. fellowship here with each other. So right. yeah, and, I love and, it. It's good and, stuff. And here we got three different states right now. And it's like, man, these are my brothers. Right. Mm -hmm. Straight right. up. Yeah. yeah. So get to like, church. Like, yeah. I can't wait, man. I, I can't wait. to. You know, it It might be in glory before I get to hug y'all's necks, right? But oh, well, It might not be. I mean, but we got, know. but but we got glory for that. That's like that's right. the thing. I, I'm hugging you from over here right now, Jeff, with my all mill mind. Okay. Oh my lord, <laughs> help him, Lord. <laughs> I'm, I'm giving you a spiritual hug. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like when people say I'm sending you good vibes. It's like no, I'm giving you, I'm giving you spiritual hugs right back. <laughs> oh, <Lord. laughs> help him, help him, Lord. <laughs> no, I'm just. Kidding. You know, I, I, you know. There is a whole lot of all meal about me. Like I'll admit that. <laughs> like ninety percent. <laughs> no, no, I won't go that far. Uh, okay. Now I I, <laughs> I I come from a premillennial dispensation, and then I switched over to to Holy. historical. But there was still a whole lot of dispy in my mm. historical, right? And so I don't know, man. Another discussion for another time. Otherwise, we're going to be here for a hot minute. Yeah, yeah, that's a fact. Just, just remember, I, I went to Moody Bible Institute. That is like, yeah, di pre mail dis be pre mail straight up. And, yeah, you know, I, I was arguing there 
about that the actual blessed hope is not the tr it's not the rapture, but is the return of Christ. Because right. that's that's really what it is. Yeah, I would agree. Would you agree, Mr. So Arnold? so would Braden, and he's all male. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. See? Yeah. So, so we all agree that there's going to come a time where the feet of Jesus will touch the, the earth and in, in his glorified body. And there's going to be a separation of the sheep and the goats. Right. Final judgment. Yeah. Like we all agree on these things. So. And I, I would also add that 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 doesn't come after a, a secret rapture. No. Right. No, it doesn't. <laughs> no. But it does come before he sets up his kingdom on earth. No. Mm -hmm. Revelation 20 says it. Says no, it. No, no, no. The most symbolic book and the most symbolic chapter of the most symbolic book. See, 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 that's why I think I'm afraid to say I'm pre, post, or all when it comes to anything because all, all of them are set on Revelation chapter 20, which mm. is the most, you know, misunderstood book in the bible i mean no the book of the book of the bible chapter of the book of the bible excuse me again you see godzilla right there <laughs> i'm totally that. fine with there being you know creatures that are described and you know making everybody <laughs> miserable yeah well whenever you read uh revelation chapter 9 and you google a picture of a roman soldier you're looking at what revelation 9 tells you <laughs> do it. I, 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 I'm, do it. I, 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 and I'm, I'm totally fine with people throwing themselves off the Perrine Bridge and not dying. <laughs> Man, that's very all meal. That, no. That's pretty cool. <laughs> yeah, that, that's one of that's one of the things that that's one of the things Revelation does say is they're gonna they're gonna wish for death and it's gonna flee from them. That's gonna mm -hmm. suck. The guy who took a twelve gauge to his head and still breathing. Yeah, yeah. Not, I think you know. Yeah, that's. I'm sorry, I got macabre fast. Yeah. Well, uh, at least you're being literal, right? <laughs> yeah. At least you're. It ain't, being a, it ain't a black literal. hawk, homie. <laughs> it ain't a black hawk. <laughs> it's King Ghidorah. Yeah. Hey, you, you, I'm telling you, those freaking tails of helicopters look like scorpion stingers. Okay, don't you be telling me that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah we definitely so as soon as we leave matthew 25 so we're going to matthew 24 25 we'll go straight into revelation Sounds i think good. that's I like the plan it. and and we'll just fight our way through it <laughs> with spiritual hugs so, yeah. that's right yeah. i got enough for all of you guys. do what the church has done at least for 1700 years because the first 300 yeah. they were pre-mill no I'm giving you an all meal hug right now, brother. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Yeah. So you know I think we just coined it instead of spiritual hugs. We'll just call it the all meal hug. Yeah. Cause that's right. Oh, cause, cause it's, it's not no real anyway. Thing. Right. <laughs> it's symbolic. Look, it's, it's the yeah. heavenly hug from above. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Is that what Paul was saying though? That, 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 that though I'm, absent with body, I'm with you. In that's, spirit. A yeah. that's a fact. That's a fact. That's a 100% factual. Yeah. <laughs> That's, that's some exegesis right there. <laughs> yeah. Hey, it don't, it don't matter if it's true, okay? Yeah. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Oh, Lord, help us. <laughs> that's right. We're all getting delusional. We are. Well, I mean, if, if, if y'all want to stay on and talk about something, I'm down for it. But if not, uh, let me know. A, we'll get off. Well, maybe we could carry on a, a little bit after the after that because it's for me it's 11:54 yeah for me i don't know 10:54 all right well we'll shut off but y'all stay on um, all right look braden any last words he done gave his last mm. words mm. glorify god and enjoy him forever all right hallelujah holla back <laughs> <laughs>